Hey, it's Sam, and today I'm showing you how to make chocolate chip banana muffins. So here is a great way to use up those overripe bananas that you have in your house. These are the ones my kids will not eat. They only like them if they're still a little bit green. So we're putting them to good use and making chocolate chip banana muffins. I have a classic banana version that has been on the blog for a while. It has hundreds of five star reviews. This is a close sister to that recipe. So if you enjoyed that one, I think you're going to love today's. We are going to start with one cup of banana, which is typically about two bananas for me. I'm just going to be measuring them on my scale before I mash them. That makes it easier than mashing them and then measuring them. Really, if you're not currently using a kitchen scale, you really should get one. That's how you know the bananas are good if they're falling apart while you're peeling them. Good for baking. So if you are using a scale, you're aiming for 250 grams of banana. And we are there, we're actually at 260. But we have a little bit of wiggle room with the bananas, so I'm happy with that. We are going to mash these. I'm just using my potato masher. And again, if you don't weigh your bananas in advance, just mash them and then measure them out into a measuring cup. Two classic sized bananas are going to work 90% of the time though. Get these really well mashed, which should be so easy because they should be nice and ripe. And remember, the riper your bananas are, the more flavorful your muffins are going to be. And before we go any further, make sure you get your oven preheating to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think my husband tried to throw these away. I, I can't even. One way this recipe differs from my classic banana muffin recipe is I wanted to use no oil in today's recipe. You guys know I'm having a moment with seed oils, so I wanted to do this with all butter, but I didn't want to sacrifice any of the moisture. I'm pretty happy to say I feel like I pulled that off. So we are going to be adding one third cup of melted unsalted butter. We'll stir that in with the bananas. For our sugars, we're going to be adding one third cup of granulated sugar, as well as one third cup of firmly packed light brown sugar. I love using this blend because the brown sugar is going to add a nice, subtle depth of flavor. We'll stir the sugar in. I want to get that nicely combined. You just need one large egg for today's recipe. Ideally, this should be at room temperature. If you just pull your eggs straight out of the fridge, you can quickly bring them to room temperature by placing them in a bowl of lukewarm water for about 15 minutes. We'll also add two teaspoons of vanilla extract and we're going to add some buttermilk. We are using three tablespoons of buttermilk. I know that seems like kind of an awkward measurement, but two tablespoons wasn't enough. One fourth cup was just a little bit too much, so three tablespoons it is. I really do recommend using real buttermilk in this recipe. The substitute doesn't pack as much flavor or give quite the same amount of moisture, but you can use whole milk or my buttermilk substitute if you don't have real buttermilk on hand or can't get it. So mix everything together, get it well combined. Okay, and we'll grab a separate bowl for our dry ingredients now. First thing you'll need is one and one third cup of all purpose flour. For our leavening agents, we'll be using one teaspoon of baking powder and one half teaspoon of baking soda. We'll also be adding a half teaspoon of salt. And if I can find a whisk, we will whisk these ingredients together until they're nicely combined. And we are just going to add this right in with our wet ingredients. This recipe comes together so quickly. Now we're going to gently fold together the wet and dry ingredients. Don't use an electric mixer for this recipe. I don't know why you would because it's not necessary at all, but it's so important when you are making muffins that you do not overmix the batter. If you do, you could end up with muffins that are dense, dry, or rubbery, which is, you just don't want that. So I'm actually only going to fold these together until they're about 50% combined. And once it is about halfway combined, I'm going to add my chocolate chips. This is one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Of course, you could use milk chocolate chips if you prefer. I add them at this point because again, I don't want to overmix. If I were to add them after the wet and dry ingredients were completely combined, then I am already going to be mixing the batter more than I need to. Gently combining it, not overdoing it is so key here. My biggest takeaways for you anytime you're making muffins or a quick bread would be to make sure you don't overmix and make sure you don't overbake. If your baked good is dry or dense, one of those things most likely happened. Now today's recipe makes 12 muffins, so you'll need a 12 count muffin tin. I recommend lining with paper liners or my parchment paper liners. Those look really nice too. And to evenly divide my muffins, I just like to use an ice cream scoop. Go ahead and distribute this batter evenly. 
which I'm not always great at doing, but I tried my best. I feel like that could have been worse. And then for a final touch, I like to take a few more chocolate chips and just sprinkle them over the muffins because these are chocolate chip banana muffins. And the extra chocolate chips just look really pretty on top. Not to mention more chocolate, which is the obvious benefit. And lastly, if you have a major sweet tooth like I do, you can take a little bit of granulated sugar and just sprinkle that over each muffin. I do really go very lightly here because it just needs a little bit, but that adds a nice crystally texture to the top of each muffin and a nice little extra pop of sweetness. All right, we are now taking these over to the center rack of our 425 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven. There they are going to bake for eight minutes. Now, after eight minutes, do not open your oven door, but reduce your oven temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We are going to bake them on that temperature for another seven to eight minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean or with a few moist crumbs. Baking the muffins on these two temperatures this way allows them to get a nice rise without overcooking the center. It just makes for a really beautifully textured muffin. We'll let these cool in the muffin tin for about five, maybe 10 minutes. And then to help keep the bottoms from getting too moist, I like to carefully remove them from the baking pan and let them cool completely on a cooling rack. Once they've cooled enough, you can go ahead and dig in. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe. If you try it, please let me know what you think. Oh, if you've tried my original, let me know what you think about these in comparison. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh, this looks so beautiful. This just has the perfect crumb. It's so good. I love these. Mm.